Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Rose Valley Winery on Beachwood Road in Rose City. See what thousands are raving about, creating a delicious variety of award-winning Michigan wines. Stop by and taste for yourself. The taste of Michigan is yours at Rose Valley Winery. Canyons Lakeside Resort and Marina, located on the shores of beautiful Sage Lake. Get away to their newly remodeled beautiful bed and breakfast or their historic 13-room hotel. Special events and activities for all ages. Call now or go online for more information on this Michigan treasure. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Magazine. I'm Barry Stutzman. On today's show, we learn of the artistry and visit the artist, the late junk artist Sonny Dalton of Kalamazoo, recycling at its finest. Then it's Michigan's food at its most eclectic. The taste of Germany in Stockbridge, the taste of the UP from Albee's Pasties Processing Plant in Gaylord, and a fast trip back to Michigan's gourmet taste treasures at the Row in Ellsworth. Stay tuned, it's all coming up on Michigan Magazine. You've heard that old cliche, one man's junk is another man's treasure? Well, that certainly is true in Sonny Dalton's case. He has gathered junk or scrap pieces from, well, scrap yards, junk yards. He takes in just about anything that is metal and turns it into works of art. He has been in many national magazines such as the car collectors and in the real sense of the word is an entrepreneur. He's created a work of art in helping clean up the environment at the same time. No, I am not with a man from outer space. I'm with Sonny Dalton, and Sonny Dalton has a very unique uh, hobby or craft. He's a sculptor, he's a metal sculptor, and what he is wearing is one of his uh, original, I don't know if you call it a space hat or what. It's a sculpture I came up with a couple years ago, and uh, I call it Independence, and I've had a lot of success with it, and a lot of people have a good time with it, and uh, I just thought it, They'd quit selling, but they keep selling more all the time, so I just keep making them. I hope they keep making these strings I make them out of, or I'm going to be out of business. I guess out. it looks to me like it's uh, one of them hats that uh, goes back to the future. Well, Sonny, how in the world did you ever uh, get started in this unique, uh, well, what do you call it, sculpture? Uh, yeah, it's uh, metal junk, metal sculpture. I, I am a sculpture, I guess. Yeah. I've uh, been a long time to really realize that I am an artist or in a sculpture, but I'm self-taught and I can't draw or anything and I started uh, about 23 years ago. My, my. Uh, you've got a tri-bike, you've got uh, uh, fire engines, you've got mailboxes that uh, you've got, uh, you name it, you've got robots. Uh, what one person would throw out in their junk, uh, you pick up and literally uh, turn it into a piece of art. I try. Well, you, you have here. Uh, could you go on and explain to us how you got started into it? You said it was some 20 some years ago. Yeah, it was right when I went to work at General Motors and I got really intrigued with uh, the guys welding and I tried to get into salvage repair and they wouldn't let me in it because I uh, <clears throat> couldn't weld. I taught myself to weld and I started goofing around on the job and my father passed away and this thing came upon me and uh, I just pursued it through the years and now I, I quit my job after 19 years and I've been doing this full time. I gave up a lot, but I gained a lot too. Oh, I'll, I can, that certainly is, you've certainly brought a lot of joy into a lot of folks' hearts here. And I, just by looking at what you've got on the, on the shelves here. Uh, tell us a little bit about this robot that is directly behind us. Well, it's made out of a uh, computer parts and here's a sprinkler uh, head here it's made out of a toaster i call it uh he's a uh, he's two-faced and it's out of an old toaster and uh here's a dental uh part here and old uh yes. shoe, shoe things here's some 50 caliber shells here and uh it's just uh 
just to represent uh, well the future, I guess. <laughs> uh, and, and right directly behind you, there's a balloon and uh, Battle Creek, especially known for their hot air balloon uh, competition they have here. Uh, and what that, what is that? To, that's uh, made out of what? That's made out of a ventilator off a roof. Uh huh. And here's part of a fan thing, and this is a food uh -huh. grater here, and here's their break. It's a, <laughs> it's it's a, a fish, fish hook. hook. Yeah. Fish hook, yeah. And there's some parts off of sprinkler heads and bolts and bearings and... Uh, what's, what's the most common? Uh, I mean, uh, there's nothing here really common, but what would be the most uh, requested uh, piece that you do? Probably my uh, locomotives, my trains. Your trains. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about the trains and what inspired you to, uh, or how did you get inspired to do the train? I really don't know. It came within the 23 years. I certainly didn't start out with it. And uh, my dad always took my brother and I on stadium drive and on Sundays we uh -huh. used to race trains. And <laughs> I feel that, you know, they've always been heavy looking and yeah. they always made a lot of noise and maybe this all came out. You know, because musical yeah. instruments, they make a lot of noise and yeah. they look heavy and, you know, they're an art in themselves yeah. without even doing anything to them. And uh, so, uh, you know, it's, I feel it's my best work. Yeah. You know? I see there's parts of saxophone. You got a body of a saxophone here. What other parts do you have here uh, that is, makes this train? Uh, well, there's post office boxes and bearings for the wheels. Uh, this one particularly has... Uh, Cowboy spur on the back. And, <laughs> Cowboy uh, spur. <laughs> yeah, and I've used toilet flushes on them before. Is that and, right? And, uh, just a lot of different yeah. little parts, and sometimes you can put golf clubs in them. And Is that right? Tri bikes. I see here you've got uh, a couple of tri bikes here. Yeah, this uh, isn't the normal looking. It'd be a hard <laughs> one to ride. The first one I ever did like this, I yeah. won an award in back in 72, I think it was, and it was for Union Bank, and it got in Time Magazine, Sports Illustrated, Is that right? World Report. And I don't know if it ever helped me, but it helped me to be recognized back yeah. then yeah. to go on with my work, you know. Yeah. What was it that Time Magazine brought out? What was their uh, interest in particular? Well, it, it was on recycling. Oh. And the thing was a cycle, you know, a bicycle. Yeah, yeah. And I did recycle things. Yeah. And uh, so I, a friend of mine says, I don't know what you'd be going up to Grand Turn. Rapids for. With that thing, you'll never win, and I won first place. Is that right? Yeah. So in recycling, you've turned uh, materials that would go into a junkyard into a work of art. Yeah, and, and, and I people, think so. yeah, people yeah. like it. What is it right here we have before us here? Well, it's an automobile and it's made out of two big mailboxes and it's got sink drains for the headlights and tricycle wheels and it's got lunch bucket seats in it and it does roll but there's a piece of glass that goes on the top and I've had people Makes buy it. Yeah, it's a functional piece of centerpiece. And But I've had people buy it without the glass. They just want it as a sculpture, you know. Yeah. But, you know, they take up a lot of room, and this way you can uh, have it right in your living room and be a piece of art and still use it. Yes. And what we got over here? What's this well, one over it, here? It's a garbage truck, too. You want to hear it? Yeah, let's take a listen to it from that. Yeah, the back end's full of junk. See, oh, boy. Boy, if you're laying on the couch and you want your wife to bring you something, just turn that on, and then she'll come out and dump it all over you. Uh, I'll bet you. <laughs> I'll bet. I'll bet. Well, what I used to do a lot of uh, was bike ride. But this is a different kind of motorcycle. Can you, <laughs> can you explain again what we got here? Well, this, this is a real popular piece. Uh, there's a lot of guys out there that ride, and, and I used a hand grenade in, uh, in this one for the gas tank, and I got musical instruments. I used to use a lot of ignition points. But you can't get them anymore, so it makes me go on and look for different uh -huh. shapes of other things, which is good too, you know. And uh, so it kind of tells the story, you know. Uh, motorcycles are dangerous, and so are hand grenades. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a yeah. And what's neat, well, I think th these are bearings again, uh, right? Uh, big bearings. Use uh, a cotter pin, and I had an uh, older. Here's off an ice box door I used for the seat on this one. It's a hinge. Oh, yeah. It's all brass, you know. And, and what do you got for mirrors there? What are the I mirrors? Got, uh, they're off of saxophone keys. Now, I'm a fisherman, or I like to think I'm a fisherman, and uh, 
This right here is a, a couple of uh, folks out fishing. They're both in trouble. One caught the front of the boat, and the other one caught the back in the motor there, in the blade. And uh, it's a, just a couple guys out fishing on Saturday morning, and uh, this is made out of an iron. An iron, just yeah. the kind of iron you yeah. iron your clothes iron with. Your clothes with, yeah. So I try to look at things, and I turn things upside down, <laughs> and the handle is here, you know. Is that something? And That's... I saw a boat, and uh, <clears throat> like, yeah. like I say, that's what I'm about, is trying to see things in, in a different way. The ordinary, and, but make it Yeah, ordinary. without having to form it myself. Yeah. And then I definitely wouldn't be able to do my art. Yeah. Because <laughs> that is that is something else. How do you come up with these ideas? I mean, uh, every uh, there's well, so many different, uh, but everything that you've got in here relates to our everyday life. Yeah, it is. Uh, like, they didn't come the first day I started, you know, it's yeah. taken 23 years yeah. to accumulate and to come up with these ideas. And uh, I still hope to keep coming up with ideas, you know, well, I'm sure. And, and finding new scrap makes me yeah. is good for uh, for my art, you know, the new recognition right. and stuff. So. Well, Sonny, uh, it certainly is evident that uh, what you're doing there is a uh, place for it. Uh, junk is not uh, junk is recyclable. In your case, it is art, true art. And we'd like to thank you very much for being on Michigan Magazine. Thank you very much. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Hingeman Acres Canoe Livery and Resort on M33 just north of Mayo, catering to the outdoor enthusiasts, cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts, and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world-famous Asabo River, a family getaway for over 75 years. Remembering good times and great food, Frank and Lisa invite you to Tim Lizzie's in Mayo for a blast back to the 50s and 60s when food was made from scratch, including home ground Angus burgers. A full menu of great food and good memories await you at the new Tim Lizzie's of Mayo. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pull. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pull. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. Our whirlwind journey to some of our favorite food destinations takes us to Stockbridge, an authentic German cuisine at the Sausage House and German Restaurant. Here, not only are delicious German meals prepared, but the meats and sausages, breads and pastries also are prepared fresh daily by the Kazmarek family. Before tasting all the great German food, we talked with Uli Kazmarek as he was preparing the day's breads and dinner rolls. Well, I learned to be in Germany a baker, and I learned that for three years in school and practicing. Uh, after that, I made two years uh, pastry chef to learn that. And when I passed all this stuff, I made five years more to get my own experience. So I was 10 years a bacon pastry chef, and my 11th year now is in Stockbridge. Oh boy, <laughs> how fortunate we are to have you here, and the family here. What's the most popular pastry that you, that you produce here? Well, my own pastry, what the people really like is, I think, the Black Forest cake for sure. Uh, it's a light vanilla cream, my own cream, uh, with cherries inside and a chocolate dough, and with a little bit of liquor flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, also, it have already my own name. Oh, it does <laughs> It's Uli's chocolate cake. Oh, <laughs> well, and, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. And Uli's chocolate cake is uh, based on a German buttercream with cacao and chocolate flavor. Oh, boy. Then you have the sausage. Well, my brother is the sausage maker and he's a cook. He learned both in Germany, the sausage maker and butcher and later the cook. Okay. And uh, right now we make only German sausage. We get the uh, spices, for example, from Germany, mm -hmm. everything comes together here. Yes, it does. Well, it certainly has been a pleasure to come down here and to visit with you and to eat some of this delicious food. And we'd like to thank Wilma and Rudolph and Frank and Uli yes. Kesmerics for having us down here mm -hmm. at the famous uh, Hans Sausage House and Restaurant uh, in Stockbridge, Michigan. Thanks for being part of Michigan Magazine. Mm. Thank you.
Our next stop on Michigan Magazine is to Gaylord, where we visit with two young Michigan entrepreneurs, Regan Qual and Paul Lachinsky, who have created a chain of Michigan restaurants called Elby's that specialize in the famous Upper Peninsula pasty. For the folks out there that don't know anything about the pasty, what is the ingredients for the, the beef pasty, which is the original pasty. Uh, the Uper pasty. The Uper pasty. The pasty <laughs> okay. made famous in the iron ore mines in the UP. That, that's the beef pasty. And the, the ingredients that you'll find are beef, potato, onion, and rutabaga. And that's it. And the, and, and the rutabaga is the key. Whenever we have a a customer from the Upper Peninsula, which we see a lot of them, because mm -hmm. they, they, they realize how good our pasties mm -hmm. are, they ask, is a rutabaga in it? <laughs> and and by, for people who don't know what a rutabaga is, that's from the turnip family. Right. Because a lot of people say, well, what the heck is a rutabaga? Yeah, right. But it's, uh, it's basically a turnip, it's a vegetable. Right, right. And uh, it adds a, a, sweet, uh, a sweet taste uh, to the pasty. It really balances everything else off. And it's a real key ingredient to make the, the right pasty. We're gonna try that. Uh true right <laughs> ingredient in just a moment or two. Oh, you know, time to eat. This is our favorite uh, favorite time. I know it's Barry's favorite time yes. because pasties are always, you know, we wouldn't have known a thing about this if it wasn't for John. You know? Yeah. We yeah. stopped, uh, we were over at CMU, right. we was doing a uh, fundraiser over there and John so graciously bro uh, brought some uh, pasties yeah. in and, public and he tried it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Barry's the pasty lover. That's right, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. The great thing about it is we don't have to go across the bridge of the Copper Harbor, Sault Ste. Marie. We can go right in our own right. backyard and get the pasty. Delicious. And like they say, the proof is in the pasty. The proof, proof is, is in, in the, the pasty. Plate, and this is going to be the pasty. <laughs> oh, you guys, I want to get into how the real youpers do it. Uh, some how do the real youpers do, do it, Regan? Boy, they pick how them right up with their hands. Right in half. Mm -mm. And then just, uh, okay. It's a handheld meal in itself. That's how it they is. do it up north. <laughs> oh, look at that. Mm. I hope you got about a half a dozen back there because this guy, he just doesn't mm. stop. Mm. They are delicious. This is living. Michigan mm -hmm. living. Right. <laughs> what more can we say? From the hot Upper Peninsula pasty of Elby's, we travel next to the row, Michigan's Country Inn. Here in Ellsworth is where West West Hoven, over 20 years ago, decided to open a restaurant that serves Michigan-grown food in a gourmet style. I'd come up here on vacation and love the area. Wanted to open a restaurant, I owned something special. And there were so many nice things out there, fruits and morels and fish, and I thought, this is the way to go. So we came to specialize in Michigan foods. Uh, Northern Michigan, gourmet dining, 1972. It's white fish and prime rib. Yeah. And we were doing some things, really, that you do in Europe where they take the fresh things from the fields around the restaurant and cook those, you know, and pick them every day. Yeah. Which is what we do. I've got two local ladies here that have their gardens devoted entirely to the restaurant. Wow. Uh, herbs, uh, the vegetables, the miniature vegetables, which is something nobody had seen before. Yeah. We don't use any canned ingredients, any frozen things. It's all fresh. Michigan product, most. That's the emphasis, yeah. sure. Yeah. And the morale mushroom certainly is a standout uh, among all, uh, um, well, is it? It's they, not a, they are always on the menu in this restaurant. Michigan's not been known in the past for, for its food, for its, for its cooking, for the Michigan products. And I think that's all changed in the last 20 years. And I think yeah. the Rowan had a lot to do with that. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people now who are emphasizing Michigan products, Michigan food. This is what is really nice about what we do, right? You don't have to go to L.A. or New York anymore to get gourmet food like this. It's right here. Michigan. It's right you here. You can get it right here in Ellsworth. Yeah. yeah. Downtown. Downtown. And amazingly downtown enough. Downtown Ellsworth. Oh, we like to, to thank uh, everybody here who's uh, showed us a great hospitality that you've shown us. And we are biting at the bit to get into our food. So on that note, once again, Wes, it has been our pleasure believe me our pleasure to come up here and to talk to you and to meet your folks and to test the food they say the proof's uh, in the pudding we're gonna find out right. time to stop talking about it, it. Eat it all right and that's just what we did first the trout roulade mm. then the pecan stuffed morel mushrooms mm -mm, delicious a big thanks to west west hoven and chef kathy along with the entire staff of the row Michigan's Country Inn of Ellsworth for providing the world with the unique gourmet taste of Michigan.
Cops and Donuts Bakery downtown Clare, what began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery, quickly became an international phenomenon, carrying out a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more, plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination, Cops and Donuts. Well, thanks so much for joining us in Michigan Magazine. The word of the day is summer, which officially begins at 104 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on the 21st of June. Take that word, email it to us at iwatchmichiganmagazine at gmail.com and get bonus entries into our vacation giveaways. For more information on that, go to michiganmagazinetv.webs.com. Have a great week. We'll see you here next week on Michigan Magazine. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Thunder Bay Resort, a destination for all seasons with special events and packages. Thunder Bay Resort in Hillman. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Shopping for that special person just got easier when you shop at Rose City Drug at 2640 North M33, just south of the Rose City City Limits. You'll find gifts for everyone on your list from 1 to 100. Shop online or in person at Rose City Drug, Rose City. Discount Foods, downtown Mayo. Find national name brand foods and merchandise at sharply discounted prices. Shop the smart way and please the family without breaking the budget. Discount Foods downtown Maya. Hale Hardware, your do-it center in Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mile.